So now we can input a message and we can press a send button. We just need now to figure out how we can send that message now over the wire using socket IO all the way over to the backend, right? So we'll try and figure out a way for Angular to talk with socket IO. And I just went into NPM and I tried to find socket IO Angular. And there's a lot of packages to pick from right here, but this is the one I'm going to pick because this is the one that I've seen most people use. I'll try and open this one. And the first thing I kind of check out is, is it being maintained? And one way to do it is to go into the repository right here and just have a look at when there was last some changes in this project. And if you look at the package uh, JSON file right here, you can see somebody changed it right here six days ago. And I can also see over here, there's a lot of people using this and there's a lot of contributors. So I'll live with this project for now and maybe there's, there's better projects later, but this is the one I'm going to pick and start using. The next thing is to start using it by starting by installing it right here. So I'll grab this command right here, the npm install command, and I'll try and run to our code base and get that project installed. So that's it, the installation is done and we now have socket IO. And again, let's just open our package JSON file just to make sure that it's actually available. And here it is, socket IO, ready for dependencies in the production code. Sweet, we're ready to start using socket IO, but how do we use it? Well, let's keep going right here. And this is where it gets pretty powerful to use Angular combined with these packages because it's already ready to use for us. So we have a very simple way to get the configuration up and running just by adding these two things right here. We need to first of all explain where's our server. And right now we won't put any options. We'll just make it as simple as possible. And then we need to kind of explain also that we wanna use the socket IO module with that configuration. So we'll do this in our code now. We'll start by copying this and we'll put this directly into the app module because this will be configured for the root of the entire application. So let's go into app module right here and let's put in that configuration right there. And you'll notice it asked me to do an import. I'll say yes. And here we go. Now we have socket IO config. Now we are not using this port right here. We're actually using the 3K port. So let's just put in 3000 right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then add the module. So that'll be the second step right here. And then we're actually good to go. And we have socket communication up and running right here. We'll add that and then we'll use that configuration. So that's all it took to kind of know about the server. Sweet. Step two, let's just keep going. It seems that they encourage us to start using services. Now services is something that Angular uses to kind of provide a way for us to reuse these services in different components all over our code. So it's a good idea to have a service. So let's just create a chat service. Now we're going to use the CLI for that. And we're going to say ng generate service because that's what we want to do. We are going to call it a chat service, but I want the service to be provided inside the chat folder under a shared folder. That's normally how we care take care of these features like this. So I'll say chat, that's the folder I want to put it into, slash shared, that's the name of a subfolder I want to generate, and then I'll just put in the name chat because I want it to be called chat service. It generates the service for me and a test file, and this time I'll keep the test file because I want maybe later to come back and do testing on this service. Sweet, let's see what's inside the service. Default, there's nothing in here. We just have an injectable and we inject them into the root, meaning that anybody can use this. That's also why it's inside the shared. Again, for later on, if you wanna be even better at lazy loading, we might not want this, but let's just keep it here for now. And then in here, we have to create our methods to start using this. And let's again, just be lazy to get started and just go and copy the send message right here. Let's go back and just put that in there because the send message right here in our code is pretty much just a way for us to send a message to the backend. Now we fail right now because his code is a bit outdated in the repository. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna to explain to Angular that this is going to be with no return type, so that is why it's void, right? The next thing we need is the socket. Now, the socket will be a service that we dependency inject right here. So I'll make a private socket. And in socket IO in his library right here, the socket is just going to be of the type socket. There we go. So now we have the socket and we need to get it from the NGX socket IO. And there we go. Now we have that socket available so we can actually emit a message to the backend. So think of it this way. When I call the emit, I actually send the message to the backend. So the emit is what triggers sending the event over here to the backend in the socket IO setup. Okay. So that's what we're doing right here. We are emitting the message. Now we need to emit it to the right channel in the backend, right? It's called message right here. Let's have a look, it's called message. So let's try and go to the backend and see what we called it at the backend. We also called it message. I actually think in a previous video, I called it chats, 
but you can just rename that to message. It's up to you what you want the name to be. I'll just name it message right here so it matches the name that I have right here. They need to match. Now the only error right here is just again T.S. Lint trying to protect me and saying you should use single quotation instead of double quotation when you write code in TypeScript. There we go. So now that's actually all we had to do to create the service. We're not done yet because we of course also need to call the service from somewhere. Now, luckily, since this is an injectable service, it's provided in the root, we can just dependency inject this service now into the component that needs it. And I know this is kind of hard when you start working with Angular to have all these different layers and dependency injection, but when you start getting used to it, it's actually an extremely neat way to work with decoupling your code in a very, very um, easy way. So let's have a service right here, the chat service being dependency injected from the outside and it's of the type chat service. There we go. Now we have the service available as well. And all we need to do now is say, when we send the message, you know, click the button, then we actually should go and use the chat service. And then we should take that chat service and actually send that message. We just console locked right here. Let's keep the console lock so we can see the front end actually hits that point right here and sends the message to the chat service. Okay, so that's actually it for the front end right now. We also need to make sure that we can do this for the back end. So let's go to the back end and make sure that it's actually running. Right now it's not running, so we have to start the back end. And another thing I want to do is I just want to do a console log right here so we can see that this is actually being uh, sent to the back end. And there I'll just pass in the data right here to kind of put in the data that I'm sending from the front end. Let's start the back end. And in order to do that, you just do again an npm run and start dev. Now, if you want to know how that works, again, go into the package JSON like I talked about earlier and check out we have a start right here. So you could also write nest start if you want to do that instead, like we did the ng uh, serve inside the Angular app. I'll start the application right here. And again, notice the port right here is uh, 3K, 3000. It's pretty hard to say in Danish when you're Dane, so that's why I'm using 3K. <laughs> I might change the port just for that. Um, but now it's actually running. That means that now I should actually be able to send messages from the front end to the back end. Let's see if this is also running. We have the ng serve right there. Everybody's happy. Let's go into our chat application right here and retry. And there we go. Now it connects to the server. You notice before that it actually tried to connect but could not connect to the server. Let's try and put in a message here. Hi. And press send. Now notice the highs down here now in the console. Let's see if we also got it on the back end. Let's see if it's there. There we go. Hi. And again, let's just try once more and say hi all. Send that. Hi all. And let's have a look at the back end. Hi all. So we are there. We have a connection now between the front end and the back end code that can communicate between each other. Happy days. Next lesson, we'll have even more fun where we'll start actually replying back when we get this message. See you next time. Bye.